profession. Where were they yesterday? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good job. Chair. Uh, call Simeon Brown. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And it's a Madam pleasure Speaker, to follow uh, Chloe Swarbrick on this bill, the Education Teachers Council of Aotearoa Amendment Bill, which is the first thing that this government's actually got through Parliament or trying to get through Parliament in regards to education. They've talked a big game, they've promised the world, and it's the first thing they've ever been able to get through this House is the Education Teachers Council of Aotearoa Amendment Bill. Well, this is going to make a big difference. And yesterday we saw outside teachers and principals protesting about this government's failure to try and adequately deal with some of the issues. And this is the answer? Order. Order. Is this the answer to the, the problems and the real issues which they were, they were raising outside? And I heard the minister, Chris Hipkins, and he was speaking outside and he said, we're doing so many great things to help teachers. We're going to make the Teachers Council of uh, oh, the Teachers Council or the Education Council the Teachers Council. We're going to change the name of the Education Council to the Teachers Council. Well, I have lots of people constantly at my door saying we've got to change that. We've got to change the Education Council to the Teachers Council. It's the biggest issue facing teachers in New Zealand, is the name of that council. And I just can't wait because that's going to solve all the problems once we change the council name and make sure that we can do a rebranding exercise. But, Madam Speaker, there's more to it than that. This bill has come about simply because of ideology, simply because they're paying... Well, that's right, Mr Bennett, they're paying back the unions. There was a review. There was a review back in 2012 on the Education Council, and it found that the Teachers Council was it was a comprehensive three-year process that found significant flaws in the Teachers Council ability in its previous form to enforce standards, That's right. to improve teaching performance, and provide sustainable leadership and governance to the sector. This bill will reverse these changes and revert back to this dysfunctional. Provision, and we hear, we heard Chloe Swarbrick go on about there were 1,036 submissions made when we changed it back in 2012, 2013. A thousand or something. Well, where were they when they came to the select committee? There were 36 submissions, and I think that just shows that they realised that it's been fixed. The problem was sorted. A review was done, and the problems aren't any in existence. If there were thousands of submissions and there were thousands of people lining up. There were, there were thousands of people who, if there were thousands of people making submissions to the select committee on this, it might suggest that there was a problem, but not one of them raised a problem. All they said was, oh, we need to change the name and we need to change the appointment process. And why? Because the unions want payback. Because it's the unions which put this government into power and it's the unions which want payback. And, and look, now we're getting these lectures. Order. We're getting these Order. lectures on democracy. We're getting these lectures on democracy from the other side of the House. They've got lots to tell us about democracy. Well, well, Madam Speaker, I just want them to take a moment to reflect on the fact that they're trying to push through the Electoral Integrity Bill and to, to squash freedom of expression in this House and squash freedom of expression Can we come back and to, this to take please, away... Mr. Well, Brown. it's a very pertinent point because Mr Little was sitting there and we all know how much the unions play a role in electing leaders and have bad leaders of the Labour Party as well, Madam Speaker. So let's get back. Let's get back to this. Uh, let's get back to the bill and some of the problems. So, Madam Speaker, what does this bill do? It changes the name of the Education Council to the Teachers Council. It changes the composition from some uh, all appointed members to seven elected members and a few appointed members, and it creates an election process and some technical changes. And how, how many pages is the bill? It's about five pages long. It's a small technical government bill which is one of their biggest priorities and which is going to apparently change the world for our teachers. But, Madam Speaker, the problems in this bill are deep and they're costly. They're deep and they're costly. Firstly, the cost. $700,000 over three years. And we've heard what that could go towards. 12,000 additional teacher aid hours per year. That's what teachers came and told the select committee. It's not us making this up. That's what teachers came and told the select committee. They said 12,000 
additional teacher aid hours could be used if per year from the money which is going to be spent on this very costly rebranding exercise. So what's the $700,000 uh, cost? $220,000 for costs associated with rebranding, $150,000 every three years to hold the elections, $105,000 per, per annum for costs associated with increased membership, such as remuneration, travel and accommodation, and $10,000 every year, three, every three years for training and council membership. So it's another $700,000 of taxpayer money for a rebranding exercise. And you've got to wonder where the priorities of this government are. This is taxpayers' money, hard-working New Zealanders, and they don't care. They just think, let's just spend, 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 tax and spend. That's all that they can do. Tax and spend, that's what this government's priorities are. Tax and spend, that's what this government does. And what else does it do? It takes away the focus of the Education Council, which will now be called the Teachers Council, from skills and competencies. Be more skill-based. So the 2012 review found that there was a need for the body to be more skill-based and capable of self-regulation and self-review. Well, who's going to be in control of this place now? Who's going to be in control of the Teachers Council now? It'll be the unions. Because how many, how many places are there on the Teachers Council? Let's see. There's one, te well, how many elected members? Six members appointed and seven elected members. There's one teacher representing the early childhood education sector. Is there a union for that? Is there a union for the... Te for the, uh, the uh, yeah, there is. There's the NZDI. A teacher representing the primary education sector. There's a, there's a union for that. One teacher representing the secondary education sector. There's a union for that. One teacher educated, elected by registered... There's a union for practically every single one of these appointments. They've pretty much put enough... They've put enough positions in there to ensure that the union mates have enough positions to ensure that there's adequate payback for their support going into the election. And what do we see in the departmental report? The departmental report, and I'll, I'll refer the members to page 21, it says, in relation to the points raised by the PPTA and NZDI uh, about creating additional appointed positions for union representatives, the bill does not prevent a union member who is a teacher from standing for election. That's OK or the unions from suggesting a person for appointment. And that's what the heart of this is. It's about creating positions for their union mates so that they can have people sitting around there and so they can revert back to the dysfunction that this was back before it was changed. Well, Madam Speaker, what we're seeing is the union mates being rewarded, the union's mates being rewarded, and the government taking a reckless spend. And so let's, let's go back to this. There was a review. This government's got 135 reviews costing $200 million. And this is the fact is, yes, there was a review that we did of the Education Council back in 2012. And we took on board the recommendations, we changed the law, and we made a body which has now been effective and which has made a real difference and which they could only get 36 people to submit to when they wanted to change it and now they want to change it back. So what that really raises into question, what is this government going to do with the 30, 135 reviews that they're doing, a whole 20 or something like that into education? Are they going to be listening? Are um, they going to be order, listening? Or are they going to be wasting order, uh, more taxpayers' money? Order, sorry to interrupt oh, the member that's okay. momentarily. Um, the member, Chloe Swarbrick, it's uh, not acceptable to change seats in the House and then um, interject on another member. Uh, she should, if she wants to interject, she should return to her seat or sit quietly. Yeah, sit quietly uh, with Labour, that's what you do. That's your Speaker job Bowen. now. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Look, I was going to raise that very point myself at the conclusion of Mr Brown's speech because he was doing a sterling job of actually continuing through that. But Prior to that, actually, we've seen a, a constant barrage of interjections that aren't adding anything to this debate, Mr Speaker, from that side, both Ms Swarbrick and previously Ms Martin. And I know the government's had a tough day and they're looking forward to recess, but it's difficult when we're trying to progress through this and our speakers are facing those constant barrages without any value from those interjections. Mm. Um, 
thank the member and I will monitor that situation very closely. Simeon Brown. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker, for your very wise intervention uh, just then. Thank you so much. So where was I? I was talking about the 135 reviews that this government's got on, the 20-something reviews that they've got in on education and they're wasting more and more money of the ta of tax, more and more taxpayers' money, so that they can find jobs for their union mates, so that they can support the, what their unions want, put them into power to do. And they're wasting taxpayers' money. And we have to ask the question: Will they actually listen to any of these reviews? No, no they won't. That's a, we know the answer. Will they listen to these reviews? Will they actually do anything with them? Will they actually know where they're going? Because they're reviewing literally everything, and we go out there and we talk to teachers, we talk to principals, and they're all asked the same question. They're reviewing everything because they came into government, they didn't know what they wanted to do. This is something which they thought, well, it's a quick win, we'll pick this on out of our back pocket, we'll change it back to what it was, we'll just do something quickly. Who cares about the money that it's going to cost? Who cares about taxpayers? Because that's not really who we represent. We just represent our union mates. So, Madam, Mr. Speaker, sorry, Mr. Speaker, we oppose the bill. We oppose changing the Education Council back to the Teachers' Council. What a shame of a piece of legislation. Uh, this is a split call, five minutes. I call the Honourable Tracy Martin. Sure, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat>